Hey guys, so as I'm sure you guys are all aware by now, President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have both tested positive for COVID-19. And in this video, I just want to talk about how this is going to affect the 2020 presidential election. And before we start, I do want to say that I do wish that President Trump along with First Lady Melania Trump do both have a very quick and speedy recovery. And although what's going to happen, it's all up in the air right now. I do hope that both of them do recover as quickly as possible, you know, with all political opinions aside. So President Trump is currently at Walter Reed Medical Hospital at, um, for precautionary measures. And their son, Baron Trump, has not tested positive. Baron has tested negative for the virus. So that is um, a good. And so this is a tweet that President Trump sent last night at 9.54 p.m. Eastern Time, where President Trump announced that he and Melania Trump, the First Lady, have both tested positive for COVID-19 and they will begin their quarantine and recovery process immediately. And this is the official statement sent out by Donald Trump's physician, the um, official physician in the White House. Uh, for President Trump's diagnosis. So I just want to talk about how this is going to affect this election because President Trump right now, he is down in many crucial key states and with him in quarantine and self-isolating, he is not going to be able to have his campaign rallies. He canceled his rallies that he had in, scheduled for Florida today and, and he also had rallies planned out here in the West for the next couple of days. So I think this is definitely going to hurt him as he's not going to be able to have his sort of high energy cam um, campaign events, which is really where President Trump builds his momentum momentum and I think that he really does enjoy going to these events because his you know his events are pretty exciting and he does have a very energetic base to support him at these events and these events really do drive up President Trump's support. So I think that this is not a good sign for President Trump that he's going to be losing this great outlet for him to gain support all around the country. And he was expected to be in Florida today, which is a very crucial swing state that the president is currently down in. He was expected to come to the West as well, you know, Arizona and Nevada, some crucial states that the president is also down in. And taking a look at the betting markets, as you will see, Joe Biden's numbers have shot up everywhere, so his numbers really did not change too much um, in who will win the election. However, President Trump's uh, numbers went down four cents. Mike Pence's went up five cents. So this is just those who are betting on that President Trump is not going to be able to run for re-election. I think that's absolutely crazy. As you can see on the seven-day graph here, Mike Pence now at three cents, and he was at one cent before this, or three cents on the first. Now he's all the way up at eight cents up there. This is the numbers today. I don't uh, the market Markets have not closed yet today, which is why they have not updated. However, after um, you know tomorrow, you'll see that Mike Pence has jumped all the way up to eight cents per share, and the president going down to thirty-five cents. That is just a little bit over a one-third chance of winning the twenty twenty election. And then looking at the margins uh, for the popular vote in the election, as you can see, most of these GOP winning numbers have all dropped, while the best case scenarios for the Democrats, you know, Dems win 7.5 to 9 percent, Dems win by 10.5 percent or more, have now shot up. So the most likely scenario, according to the betting odds, is that Joe Biden wins the popular vote by 10.5 percent or more. I don't think this is going to happen, but this is still very a very good sign for Joe Biden. As you can see, these are all Biden winning scenarios, and they have all gone up or stayed the same. So Joe Biden has not lost any of these except for some of these smaller margins, you know, one to six percent in favor of the former vice president. And then even more alarming, looking at this electoral map, we look at this map just a couple of days ago. And a couple of days ago, you saw that North Carolina was in the Trump column. Florida was in the Trump column. And it was a pretty close race up there. But now Joe Biden is expected to win 335 electoral votes, more than the amount that Barack Obama won in 2008. And then President Trump is currently expected to win 203 electoral votes based on the betting odds. And this is a horrible sign for the president. He has lost his lead in North Carolina. He's now down by basically 14%. He's down 10% in Florida because, of course, uh, 57 Then President Trump would, of course, have a winning chance of 34% or 44% uh, of winning this state or 43%, uh, my apologies, but he would have a 43% chance of winning the state of North Carolina and then he would have a 45% chance of winning Florida. So Biden plus 10 here in Florida and then plus 14 here in the state of North Carolina. The state of Ohio, President Trump has a 50 cent share. It's gone down five cents. And this is basically um, a tie 
between Biden and Trump at this point. Biden has been leading, and we're going to take a look at the polls in just a few moments here. But Biden has been doing very well in the state of Ohio, as well as the state of Georgia. Trump only has a 56 cent share here in the state of Georgia. The state of Iowa, President Trump, 52 cents. That's down 8 cents from just one day ago. Six electoral votes. This is pretty devastating for the president. State of Texas, Trump has gone down three cents. He's now at 69 cents per share for winning the state of Texas. You know, Arizona, there's no change. Wisconsin, Biden's share went up one. Michigan, up one for the former vice president. Pennsylvania, no change. Minnesota, no change. Most of these crucial Democratic states for Joe Biden have not really seen too much of an increase or decrease. So this is all looking very good for Joe Biden. Nevada has now been added into the likely column for Joe Biden, so 62 likely votes. So Joe Biden does not need any of his lean states. So he does not need both North Carolina nor Florida to win this election. So this is all moving towards the Biden, you know, um, towards the Biden column. These states are all moving positively towards the left, and I think that that is pretty bad for the president. You know, he is expected to have campaign rallies in basically all of these states in the coming weeks. And with him out of action, I think this is definitely going to hurt his campaign very, very much. I think that President Trump is going to try to get out a little bit early, earlier than the two months that the CDC recommends, the typical, or not two months, two weeks, that is the typical for isolation time. But I do not think that they're going to have the next debate. As you can see here, I plotted them out onto this calendar. Um, I apologize for the words being a little bit small. Let me try to make this a little bit bigger for you guys here. Um, that's not going to work. Okay. Um, actually, we'll just keep it like that. But currently, this is the second so Trump test positive. He got, went into isolation yesterday as well as announcing the COVID test yesterday that, that he had taken the test after Hope Hicks one of his closest advisors uh, what tested positive for COVID-19. And then the seventh, this is the vice presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Vice President Mike Pence on the seventh. I don't think that President Trump is going to be able to come out of isolation before that debate. However, I do think that that debate is going to go on as Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, as well as uh, second former second lady Jill Biden, they have all not tested a positive for COVID-19. They have all tested negative, even though Joe Biden had a debate um, with the president just a couple days ago, just three days ago, he met with the president. They were socially distant, but they did not have any masks on. And I think that this is definitely a bad sign for the president because he has been denying how well this virus can spread. He's been having so many events without masks on. You know, he wouldn't even wear a mask for the first couple of months, and then he started to wear it occasionally. But he always seems to just bring bring uh, the mask along, but never actually wears it. Unlike Joe Biden, who has been pretty precautionary with his mask wearing. However, the president currently is not in good standing as he has been downplaying this virus for months now, and now he has caught it. And so it really depends on how he's going to recover. President Trump's, you know, statistics are not are stacked against him right now. He is a male, which means he has a two times higher chance of being hospitalized than a female. He is also an elderly person at 74 years of age. He is five times more likely to um, get hospitalized than a healthy young person. And he is also... Um, medically obese with a BMI of 30, which means that he has a three times higher chance of getting um, hospitalized, which means he has a 30 times higher chance of getting hospitalized than a young, healthy uh, young woman. So that is definitely, the numbers are against him, but I do hope that he does have a quick and speedy recovery once again. But if you compare this to what Boris Johnson saw, of course, he was another major leader who caught the virus. It took him six weeks to recover. And President Trump, he does not have six weeks to recover from the election. He has a little bit over five weeks. I think that if he is sick for six weeks, I really think that's going to hurt his campaign. I think that he's still going to see some pretty similar numbers, but I don't see how him having COVID is going to help him in any way. I really don't see any sort of sympathy vote moving towards his direction. As you can see on the 12th, we have the uh, Supreme Court hearings for Amy Coney Barrett beginning on the 12th here. I think that it is going to move back if the president is not going to be able to attend if he is still in the hospital at this point. However, it could definitely still go on. Mitch McConnell has said that you know that his plans are not going to be changing. However, we'll see how this develops in the next couple of days. The second 
presidential debate is on the 15th, which is just one day less than two weeks after he tested positive here on the second. So this is just two weeks later. And I think that if President Trump is still showing any signs of COVID-19, this debate, I do not think it's going to occur unless it's going to be virtual, which really I don't think is going to make too much sense. I don't think anyone's really going to watch it if the debate does go virtual. But now I guess they do have um, the feature to be able to mute the president whenever he is breaking the rules. However, that is probably going to be implemented even if the debate does go on, as last time just did not work out between the two candidates, mostly just President Trump interrupting Joe Biden and Chris Wallace, the moderator. So this is two weeks after the test. I doubt that the Biden campaign or anyone in Biden's inner circle is going to allow him to be at risk of the coronavirus because I think that if Biden catches it, that's also going to be pretty devastating for his campaign. And if he catches that debate, that's just basically all the time until the election is going to be in isolation. So I doubt the second debate is going to occur unless President Trump can prove that he's perfectly fine way before this debate. And then the third presidential debate is on the 22nd. I think that this debate might still go on. However, it's still all up in the air. It's basically how President Trump recovers and how quickly he is able to do so. But currently, he has been sent to Walter Reed Medical Hospital, which is not the greatest of signs because I think that unless the doctors really were worried about anything happening, that he would not be sent to the hospital. And of course, Election Day is just there on the 3rd of November. So Election Day has come pretty early this year. Last year it was the 8th, so it's five days earlier. And this gives, this basically cuts Donald Trump's time to campaign in half. There are less than 33 days, 32 days until the election. And President Trump is probably going to lose at least 14 of those days, in my opinion, if he is going to stay in quarantine for the suggested CDC um, regulation of two weeks in social isolation for President Trump. So uh, that's basically cutting his campaign time, the amount of time that he gets to go out and meet with voters by in half. And that's definitely going to harm the president because these virtual events have been working pretty well for Joe Biden. Not well, but he does tend to do them a lot more. The president, I doubt he's going to be doing any virtual events. Um, events. So basically, it's going to be nothing coming for the president in the next week. So I think that's definitely not going to help him in any way. He's not going to be able to draw out any of that support that he might have seen if you know he would be able to be there on the campaign trail. And then one of the biggest reasons why I think this is horrible for the president is that now he's doing very horribly in many states. Minnesota, he's down with a lean margin or likely margin to Joe Biden. Wisconsin, a lean margin right now. Michigan, also a lean margin. Pennsylvania, also a lean margin. The second district of Maine, he's down with a tilt margin. The second district of Nebraska, a likely margin under Joe Biden. The state of Arizona, he's down right now with a lean margin. And in the state of Iowa, he just retook the lead. So he was actually down in this state for quite a while before this, or not quite a while, but he was down in this state. And he has been down in the state for quite a few times this election cycle. The state of Texas, he is currently up 2.3 points, I believe. That's going to go into the lean column. But remember, these are states that vote voted for President Trump by 9% in Iowa and 8% in Texas. This was a solid state for the GOP in 2012 and a state that has voted for the Republican Party, the Republican candidate, in every single election since 1980. So these four states, Joe Biden is already at 291 electoral votes with just his likely and lean states. But he has, you know, he has even more lean states on this map if you really to take, take a look at the data. The state of Georgia, Joe Biden leads by 0.3%. This is devastating for President Trump. In the last five polls out of the state of Georgia, President Trump leads in none of them. This is Biden plus three, plus one, Biden plus two, plus three, plus three. President Trump led in one YouGov poll basically over a week ago by one point. And the three polls before that, an A-plus weighted Siena College and New York Times upshot poll show that there was a tie here in the state of Georgia. And the demographics in Georgia are shifting to the left. And the state of Georgia is getting less and less safe for the Republican Party in every single election. They were safe for Bush both times. They were not safe for McCain. They went a, a, um, higher for the GOP in 2012 with Mitt Romney, with President Trump, it came back down again to around 5%. And now Joe Biden is leading here by 0.3%. And I think that with President Trump out of action, Joe Biden can definitely take advantage of this opportunity and maybe even flip the state of Georgia for the first time in decades, as the last time that Georgia went to a Democrat was in 1992. State of Ohio, Joe Biden has also solidified his lead here. Um, he led by two points here. Uh, Heart Research Associates does put 
Donald Trump up two points, but you have to take a look at these numbers here. They are not a good sign for the former vice president. These polls are quite old. This one being from September 24th to the 27th. This one is pretty old from basically last month. These survey monkey polls, I would just ignore. So really the last poll that came out before this poll was four polls that showed Biden up you know, five points, five points, one point, and one point. Two A minus rated pollsters. This is by Fox News, an A minus rated pollster on 538. These are one of the most credible pollsters. Biden plus five among uh, registered voters, Biden plus five among likely voters in the state of Ohio, a state that Trump won by 8% four years ago. State of Florida, Joe Biden's also seeing a little bit of an increase in his numbers here. As you can see, he leads by five points, four points, three points, and six points. So his numbers are definitely up from when he actually was down in a poll here by ABC News and the Washington Post. If you take a look at some more polls, his numbers were quite down just two weeks ago. However, now they do seem to have come back up. He leads by five, four, you know, three to six points. That's a pretty good margin for Joe Biden, considering this is a state that he does not need, and a state that went to the president in 2016. And then lastly, the state of North Carolina, Biden plus one. You know, still at this point, Biden has not lost his lead ever in the state of North Carolina. He has been leading in this state for the entire election cycle. Biden leads by two points in the two newest polls, as well as three points in another one, following some pretty disappointing polls just a week ago, or a couple days ago, just four or five days ago. But Joe Biden's numbers do seem to have climbed up a little bit as of right now we'll have to keep an eye on north carolina in the next coming weeks but basically what this shows is that these states is all you know in the biden column right now florida is a lean state for joe biden right now georgia is of course tilt north carolina also is of course tilt and ohio is also tilt so with the president out of action un unable to be able to campaign in these states i think that's going to hurt him i think if joe biden takes advantage of this time he can definitely win us over the enough support for him to carry this state or these states in the election so joe biden 369 trump 169 right now according to this electoral map right here this is the basically the electoral map based on the polls but some states are a little bit off you know alaska would be a lean state south carolina would be a lean state so it's actually overestimating the numbers that Trump is seeing on this map right here. But definitely, I do hope that President Trump, as I said again, does have a quick and speedy recovery so he can get back to work. You know, this is the President of the United States. He is still the leader of the free world and one of the most important people in the world. So I do hope that he recovers as quickly as possible. But definitely, his diagnosis really is not going to help his campaign in any way. I think he's only going to be hurt from this diagnosis. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below. Also consider subscribing to my channel, leave your thoughts in the comments below, or along with any video sessions for videos you'd like to see from me in the future. And I'll see all of you guys in the next video.